Hi, welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to look at how to number invoices or how to do a print merge using Corel Draw and Excel. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to print these invoices four up. These are um, half a page and we're going to print them on tabloid 11 by 17. So we can fit four of these up on a page and we're going to have them so that they print with the number the invoice number here where where, where they change on each uh, each invoice so <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my page layout so I'm going to put four of these up Let me zoom out here use a shortcut on the keyboard F3 Center this. Okay, I'm going to set my page size to 11 by 17, and now I have my layout for up. <clears throat> now, in this case, uh, these invoices are going to be numbered. I'm going to be printing a total of 500 invoices, <clears throat> and they're going to be numbered uh, from starting at 501 and ending in 1,000. So, because I have four invoices up. Let me go over to Excel, and this one, this happens to be in Spanish, but you don't really need anything here except for what I'm going to say. Uh, you know, Excel works the same. So, four invoices means I need four uh, data sets, or four numbering heads, if you will. So, going back to Excel, each, one, each column is going to be, uh, <clears throat> is going to correspond with one invoice. So here, I'll, I'll just, and you can call these whatever you want. I'll just call them NO1, NO2, NO3, and NO4. Now, when I print these, uh, the printer, I want the printer to be uh, sending them so that the last invoice is at the bottom of the stack, and the smallest number is at the top which means I want them to be printed in inverse order. So I'm going to set up my numbering that way. So what that, what that means is <clears throat> my number one invoice will be number 1000. Now, because we're distri distributing 500 invoices among four, in four different uh, invoices, let's do the math real quick 500 divided by 4 that means that that means means that each number needs to be 125 numbers apart from one another what does that mean if this is my first invoice and this is number 1000 right then this one which is my second invoice needs to be 125 less than that which would be 1000 minus 125 which would be 875 now you can you can hard code that into Excel but the easier thing to do would be to just once you, you click on your on your cell here type in a formula we start that with an equal sign and I'm going to say click on the the cell to the left right so what this is telling Excel is whatever number is on the left subtract or minus 125 and I'll press enter and Excel is going to turn that into a value now all I have to do is select this cell and from the bottom right corner you see the little square here I can click and hold and drag to extend that formula to the adjacent uh, cells what that will do is it will repeat that same formula that same code onto these cells so now here uh, cell C2, if you look at the, f at the formula, it's looking at the cell to the left and subtracting 125. And this does the same thing. <clears throat> now, um, the next step is now that I know how far apart each number should be, each row corresponds to a different page. Not a different page here, but a different page as in the whole. So this is page one. 
uh, a second page, which includes four, would be page two. And those, uh, we're going to have the numbers being subtracted by one. So again, we'll type in the formula here. We'll start with the equal sign. This time we'll click on the cell above, and we'll, we'll tell them, we'll tell Excel that this one we want it to be the number on top minus one. And if you press enter, again Excel will give you the value. Now this time I'll click and hold again the bottom uh, right corner, and it has that that little darker square. Click and hold, and this time I'll drag across the other three cells, so it repeats the formula. Now as you can see, for each column, uh, the number below is being subtracted by one. And I know that I need 125 uh, different uh, sets, which means that now I can click and hold and drag this down to the number, or to row number 126. Now it's 126 because we're using the first one up here for header, for titles. So let's click and hold and drag all the way down to 126 Oops. there we go 126 See? so now everything is, is uh, it's been entered in, in terms of values and we can check see this is my four column and it goes from 501 let me scroll all the way up to 625. Now, the next column over, if we go to the bottom of the stack, it's going to print uh, 626 all the way to 750 and so on and so forth. <clears throat> now, okay, so this is partially done, but here's a little a little uh, tip. If you look at our, uh, back at our invoices, if you look at the number, it has the word uh, the abbreviation for number and o dot. Now we can add that here in Excel by selecting the cells with the numbers. So I'll just click on this very first cell with the with the number, not the, not the title one, but the one with the number. And I'll scroll down to the end of the list. I'll hold Shift on my keyboard and, and select the very last one. And then I'll, I'll right click anywhere in the selection, and I'll click on Format Cells. Now I'll wait for the dialog box to open. And <clears throat> once it's up on my screen, it'll give me different options, but the one I want, uh, want will be under special. And I'm sorry, no, not special. Custom. Now here under type, I'll delete whatever is in here. And I'll type in quotation mark N O dot space and I'll close the quotation mark. And I'll just type in three zeros, which are placeholders for the actual numbers that I already have here. And here, if you look at the sample, you can see that it'll say N O dot space and the number. I'll accept this, and now it's replaced all my cells with that prefix for number. Now all I have to do is go to the go to my file, uh, save as, and I'll save this to my desktop. Uh, and I'll save this as a comma delimited uh, comma separated values document. Even though this is a Sp in Spanish, the extension is the same. It's dot CSV. You can call this whatever you want. I'll just call it test. might prompt you. Yeah, usually it, prom it prompts you that it can only say one, one, one sheet. So I'll just click accept, and then it'll tell you that you know if you're sure this is the, the document the document type that you want to save. So just click yes, and then close this. It's important to close this before going to Corel Draw. If you leave this open, Corel Draw will say that it can't access the document. So we'll close this. We don't need to save any changes. We already did, and we close this and go to Corel. So let me zoom out with Shift and 4. It's a keyboard shortcut for you. And we're going to 
uh, go to file select print merge and create load print merge it'll bring up the wizard so we're going we're not going to create a new text we're going to import okay we'll click next uh, we're going to select the file that we previously saved on our desktop so we'll navigate here go to our desktop change our filter if you don't see it it's because it defaults to this rich text format filter so we'll click here and select the comma separated files okay, and there it is we'll click here click on open let it do its thing okay click next it'll show you your columns which uh, they're called fields field name one two three four okay click on next and then it'll show you the values for those fields. Here's column one, two, three, four with their corresponding numbers. Click on next and finish. And so it'll bring up the print merge bar, which you can dock. I personally like to leave it out here. And notice that <clears throat> here you'll be able to select your columns. There's number one, number two, number three, and number four. Now, <clears throat> what you have to do is uh, select the one that you want to place and click on insert print merge field I'll move it out the way and I'll repeat, repeat this for the other fields two three and four okay now what I want to do is I want to take a look at this font so that I can match it up to that same one that I'm using so this happens to be Gothic 720 at 18 points. So I'll select my uh, my place placeholders here, and I'll select Gothic 720 at 18. Now, because in a way these are regular text items, you can still manipulate these uh, with the paragraph options that you have. So you can align these left, center, right. In this case, we'll keep them left. And so what I'll do is I'll uh, align each one of these with the number, okay? And I'll use the shortcuts, the keyboard shortcuts. So I'll select my first uh, number and then hold shift and click on, on this number, which is where I wanted it to be. And I'll press T on the keyboard, T as in top. And so what that'll do is it'll line them up at the top and then press L as in left. And if I can zoom in, I'll show you. See, it's it's aligned on the left and at the top. So let me repeat. Let me zoom out with Shift F4, so I can see everything. And I'll repeat these steps for the other three items. So um, we can put this, select this, and then Shift click on the number. Press T L. Same thing for number three. T L. And lastly, TL. Okay. Now, let me zoom in. And what I want to do is I'll delete the, the numbers in red. We don't need those anymore. These new numbers that we've put in are going to replace and they're going to change on each page with, with the correct number. Okay. Now, Shift F4 so I can zoom out. And now, if this, if this is, uh, at this point, it's, it's ready. So if I were to uh, need to print these, I will delete my boxes, my page box, I don't need those. I don't want this to be printed. And this is important. Um, you're going to repeat, you're going to copy and paste everything, everything here, uh, based on the number of parts that your invoices are. So for example, your typical two-part invoice, which is uh, usually a white, and uh, a yellow canary would require me to copy everything control c on the keyboard okay make a new page do that here and paste it okay so now i have two pages that way the printer is going to is going to send two copies with the same number now <clears throat> Uh, in in my case, based on how my printer is set up, I usually have my second page be the one with the red number, which means this is this is going to be the white page, which will include the red number. This one 
which will be the yellow page, I don't care if if it's if it's black. <clears throat> now, being all black, because the, the printer that I have detects that it's only black. So this might be the case for you. You have a different rate for your clicks based on black and white and based on color. So if you make both of these red so that all your invoices are printed with red numbers, then each page will be counted as full color. But if your printer has the ability to detect and separate count one as full color and one as black and white, you'll save tons of money. <coughs> so now that I have this set up, again I have two pages. They both have the same placeholders. It's an exact copy. The only difference is that the second page has the numbers in red. So now I'm going to perform a print merge. And the way that I do that is I'll merge the I'll merge this to a new document. Now because it's 500 pages and it's two copies, this is going to take a while. So I'll click here. I'll let it do its thing. And we'll end up with um, well, it's 500 numbers divided by 4, which is 125 pages times 2 copies. So we'll, un we'll, we'll end up with 250 uh, pages. Now, because invoices usually, as in this case, have a lot of lines, a lot of information, it can boggle your, your system. In this case, as you can see, my screen went black. I don't even know if this is being recorded as we speak, as I speak. <coughs> Uh, one thing, depending again on if you have a fiery controller, uh, you might be able to just print the invoice as a master, which would which would mean that you only print it once, and then you print the invoice the numbers separately, just the numbers. So if you have the ability to do that, you'll be saving tons of time, tons of resources. Okay, <clears throat> so it's done doing its thing. Let's take a look. Take a closer look. I'm on page one. As you can see, it's replaced the, the NO with the number that I had. So here I have number one, number two, number three, number four. Let me zoom out a little bit with F3, just so where I can see all four numbers. Okay, so here are my four numbers one, two, three, four. Now, moving on to page two. It should be the same numbers, but in red. And yep, there they are. Now, page three, I would expect one number less in each one of these. So I have 1,000, 875, 750, and 625. And bingo. Now each one is one number less, and then it repeats in red, and it keeps going. One number less, repeats in red, and so on and so forth. If we go all the way to the last page, you'll see that I'll end up with 501, which is my first number. And that's it. Now you just have to print uh, to your printer as you usually do. Select the paper tray and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them uh, below. And if you're interested in any more videos of this type, uh, make your suggestions and we'll, we'll get to them. Thanks for watching.